Welcome to Tech Hour in Focus. We've been away for a while um, and we've not stopped working. Um, we are working on quite a big project at the minute that's taken us off the air and we've been doing a lot of time in the studio. Big putting this project. Together. <laughs> um, we've been able to do that largely because of the help from our Patreon supporters. Yes. So to everyone that signed up to Patreon, um, we can't thank you enough. And Massive thanks for that. We've already given you guys a little taste of the project we're working on. Um, but yeah, just the, the smallest sort of taste. But yeah. I think that that um, is an indication of, well, just a small part of the gratitude that we've got towards the support that has been shown to yeah. us. It's been vital to keep us going during this blip. But when we come roaring back with the, uh, yeah. the bundle that we've, we've actually come up with, yeah. um, the work that we've been doing um, on Hiratasan's, uh, our studies of Hiratasan's um, methods and approaches, um, I think it'll all be worth it. Yeah. Worth saying as well, um, later on this year, um, hopefully in the not too distant future, we'll be able to repay a bit more of that um, with our gratitude for, for the Patreon subscribers. Yeah by offering um, regular coaching webinars. So we can field mm. questions, commonly asked questions, and we can run through stuff. We can yeah. even analyze either diagrams or bits of video, or whatever it is, to actually help you out with what you're struggling yeah. with. So that'll be a regular bonus for people that sign up to all of the tiers yeah, of the Patreon support. Essentially, it's like taking part in a live episode. There's just a, mm. a small group of people brought into the webinar. So you're on your computer at home. We're sat in front of a camera. You ask us questions. Yeah, you can type questions yeah. in and then we can respond. Yeah. Um, and we might take questions in advance and have a sort of a theme around yeah. it. But basically, it's your chance to pick our brains on the stuff that is causing you problems and bugging you yeah. um, when you're out on stream so we can help you get over that. So um, they're, yeah. they're things that are going on behind the scenes and with the help, as again, can't say it often enough, with the help of our Patreon supporters. I'm sure we'll have a link on screen if you're interested in supporting us via Patreon. In becoming one of those. Yeah, <laughs> just, just follow the links. Later on this year, we plan to bring so much more to you guys as well as keep these free episodes online. Yeah, it starts to snowball yeah. because then yeah. that feeds into doing more episodes yeah. and everything yeah. that we need yeah. to be doing. So. In this episode, we've got a couple of things. First of all, we want to treat you to a little preview of this big project that we've been working on. And second of all, we've got a fantastic interview with Keichi Akushi. Hmm. Um, he's a thoroughly nice guy. Um, you may or may not have come across him online as Tenkara Ya. Yes. His Tenkara shop in Japan. Yeah, that's um, quite worth flagging in a little bit of yeah. uh, Japan geekery here. When you have Ya at the end of something, it just means shop. So yeah. it could be some, something shop. So Tenkara yeah. Ya means our shop yeah um so yeah that's helped you to maybe remember. yeah if you do have a browse on his site one thing to bear in mind if you can't find what you're looking for if you send him a message he does everything he can yeah. to actually locate what you're after so if you'd like to do a, a, a we don't get any kickbacks yeah, that's that, true yeah this is <laughs> just purely, like that yeah, purely just for the love of Katie, we have no financial interest in what he does but he will hook you up with anything he can. He's really helpful in sourcing. I, I know a few friends of mine who have wanted wet wading gear. Yeah. And they've just got obscure yeah. stuff and he's gone yeah. away and, and got um, more. I remember uh, he sourced some line for Chris Hendricks, mm. Um, mm. you know, things like that. So if there's something that you've seen you want to know more about, he's the man to contact. Um, his interview, we did a bit of hiking up a beautiful little stream to uh, sit down. We did. He was very kind to us, though. Yeah. It's probably worth mentioning that the, the hike and the stream itself, uh, although Cage is, is, is a great lover of Genryu fishing, mm. this headwater sort of fishing, there's a bit of a misconception around that Genryu and headwaters in Japan are these kind of small, ankle-deep kind of little trickles of tributaries right at the top of the system. Yeah. Rivers aren't like that in Japan. The ones up in the mountains where they're talking about, they can be very deep, very powerful, um, really quite dangerous mm. environments. But as I say, Casey took it easy on us and actually took us yeah. on a very gentle... We were still hiking for a good you know, yeah. part of the day. We had a good, good sweat on at, let's the, not, at the end of uh, it. Let's not forget <laughs> his, uh, his travelling companion on the day, Hida Yoshida, yes. who cooked us some fantastic noodles and served them on a leaf Amazing. and actually cooled in the stream yeah, water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we had so some that, good beer that day. Yeah, well. yeah. I do, I do recall as well there were... Uh, a little bit of a problem with leeches uh, all day long. Oh yeah, <laughs> we've got. <laughs> we could probably. We need to show people that at some point as well. Yeah, well, Maybe. I'm sure we could flash a teaser <laughs> up on screen now if uh, yeah, guard a guy, the particularly nasty, uh, nasty one that uh, <laughs> swallowed half the blood in his leg. I think. <laughs> got his revenge on it though. Yeah, as well, yeah. So it? that's all coming up. Um, 
But now let's have a quick look at the sort of teaser. Shall we show people what we've got? Uh, what yes. we've got coming up first. Yeah. Um, this is just a little teaser from quite a substantial package of several videos, PDFs, and audio books that are it's coming a new out. departure for yeah, us at this yeah. time. It's uh, some new stuff coming soon. So let's take a look at that now. それと、あの、今日は暖かいから暖かい時は水通しのいいところ、水温の上がらない水通しのいいところ、または joining Hatsan on stream here and as you can see he's very kindly agreed to swap his usual camo horsehair line for a bright fluorocarbon line that the camera can see. Now, as well as targeting the cooler areas, he's also looking to pick up on the spots that most other anglers overlook. So he's looking for good fish holding lies, but ones where most anglers wouldn't think to put their fly. He's also trying to do something a little bit different from most of those other anglers too. You'd probably be astonished if you've seen any of our previous work to see that Hirata-san is splashing the end of his casting line down. Now this is a risky tactic, but Hirata-san knows his river so well that he knows when he can apply it. But the detail is critical, and that detail is only visible in one quarter speed slow motion. You can see that I've highlighted when his line splashes down, and this alerts the fish. But in less than a quarter of a second, he's lifted his line off and replaced it with his fly. So when the fish looks towards the splash, all it sees is a tantalisingly manipulated fly. The next crucial detail is the slack created by manipulation. As well as holding the fly in the splash zone for longer, that slack provides a cushion to a fish when it grabs the fly. It can turn with the fly before it's pulled out of its mouth. Because the fish is facing away from you when you set the hook, there's a much better chance that you'll get a solid hook hold. The opposite happens when a fish grabs a fly on a tight line it immediately feels the tension and either spits the hook out or it's pulled out of its mouth. And we've all had that experience of the sudden jolt and the realisation that we've just missed a fish. Here Haratasan is casting almost directly upstream and dead drifting, but he switches immediately to an across stream presentation with his rod upstream of his line and fly. This is effectively a downstream presentation. The gentle downstream curve of the line tethered to his rod tip is exactly the same shape as it would be as if he was facing downstream with his rod held high. Now he can control the pace of the fly as it travels downstream. You can think of this as fishing downstream without casting downstream. So that's just a little tease of what's coming up, just a, a fragment. A very of, thin yeah, sliver of, <laughs> of that um, whole project. It is absolutely relentless with diagrams, freeze frames, and, and just really solid picking up every little nuance of Hirata San's technique. We, I mean, we've been carried along on quite a, a detailed journey from mm. repeated visits to Hirata San from 2014, 15, 16, 17. Mm. Um, and it's kind of an amalgamation, <laughs> I can't even speak, yeah. amalgamation of all those things. Um, yeah, yeah, Am amalgamation. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Um, I suppose we ought to leave it there for now. We do have uh, this product ready almost for launch. You'll be hearing about it within the next week or so. We'll mm. just have a few finer points like uh, tidying up the audio books, which is a new thing for us. Definitely. Do watch this space because yeah. uh, you'll have a chance to get a free uh, personal screening for that yeah, um, yeah. if you jump through a couple of very easy to navigate hoops that we'll, we'll put up yeah. to make the whole thing work yeah yeah it's one of those things where by, by actually signing up for the screening you will be helping us mm. so um, yeah if you can do everybody wins on to the interview with Keiichi um, yes. just a re really really nice guy um, speaks great English yeah, Stud studied yeah. in uh, in Brighton for a while yeah, had his, yeah. he likes his motorbikes I think yeah. he had, he had a, the um, the proper 60s moped um, you know the full yeah. sort well, of uh, quadrophenia experience last time I saw him he actually came uh, on, on his motorbike in, uh, yeah at yeah, the band show yeah. um, 
I think without further ado, let, let's just get in yeah, there. Yeah, Keiichi and uh, his own let, words. Let, let Keiichi, yeah, let him tell us in his own words. <laughs> Check um, it so out. here he is, Keiichi Akushi. I was born in Mito, uh, Ibaraki, Japan, um, about 100 kilometers um, northeast of Tokyo. And uh, I grew up in my hometown, Mito, till my, uh, I, until I was uh, 20, like oh, 18, then I went to university. So I uh, first did uh, land fishing when I was uh, four or five years old with my father. Uh, he taught me how to fish. So first of all, it was just uh, coast fishing um, in a river or in a lake, in a pond near my place. And uh, uh, as I grew up, um, I was, uh, you know, getting to uh, interest, interested in uh, um, going mountain streams. Then I, when I was 30 years old, actually, I first started kebari fishing in, uh, in a mountain stream. It was my first time. And uh, from that time, I have been doing uh, fly fishing and tenkara fishing, maybe half and half. But I like, uh, uh, especially uh, most upper part of the river, are uh, like Gendu, Gendu area, we say. Um, whatever, I mean, uh, you know, I don't mind doing, you know, bait fishing or kebari fishing. I mean, tenkara fishing, fly fishing, it's okay. I like Genryu fishing. So I always use uh, 360, um, 360 rod in action of uh, um, 6 4 or maybe you know, like very soft, we say soft, um, flexible, um, full flex type action. I prefer. But I don't use uh, actually uh, um, level lines. I normally use a tapered, tapered line uh, or maybe a hard tapered line sometimes. Because in Gendu area, uh, we don't use, uh, you know, like long roads or, you know, long line system. I use uh, a 360 meter load with uh, maybe same length of tapered line, like three, uh, 60 or maybe four, uh, four meter, plus, uh, one, plus about one meter pipette. And the pipette size is like, we say, uh, 0 0.8 go. It's like, you know, 5x. Uh, yeah, that's it. And I like, uh, you know, like dry type uh, fries. We say, you know, dry tenkara. It can be, you know, a little bit, uh, um, maybe like a mixture, but, you know, I like that because I like the, you know, um, action. We, we, I can see, uh, you know, visibly see uh, action of uh, fish biting to my fly. I like that very much. It's like Western pattern, um, basically. Uh, but I sometimes use, uh, you know, traditional Japanese tenkara kebari. Like, uh, I gave you one, um, gorocho kebari, like Japanese uh, kadis type. But always uh, I use kebari as a dry fry. Um, I like, you know, I, I'd like to see the fish biting my fry on the surface of the water, that's why. And also in Genryu area, you know, fish are not so shy, not so nervous. So they don't mind any type of kebari forever. I like uh, Genryu area in a you know, remote place or deep uh, in a mountain. I like the atmosphere. Um, I do Genryu fishing. It's, not because, you know, I like just fishing. I like to be in Genryu area, in a deep, in the mountain, 
and spend their time in a perfect nature and uh, to be completely apart from people's uh, living area like town the cities and uh, um, so many daily things I can forget those things when I'm in the in the Gendu area doing fishing it's and uh, I don't mind number of catch I don't mind size I like I'd like to do uh, fishing in a beautiful scenery, in a beautiful landscapes. And uh, naturally, you know, I became uh, like now, you know, doing, in, uh, doing Gendu fishing in the mountain because I like the place very much. So I think uh, uh, when I first was a kid, I knew, you know, kebari fishing, fly, Japanese style of uh, Japanese style fly fishing. At that time, you know, we didn't know the word of tenkara. We say just kebari fishing in mountain stream or in Keiru area. So nowadays, uh, most of uh, Japanese anglers, I mean, uh, Keiru anglers, call. Uh, kebari fishing, ten, tenkara fishing now. So I think tenkara fishing is uh, basically the fishing to catch trout, Japanese trout, like uh, Iwana, Yamame. Okay, sometimes it's imported one, but uh, uh, rainbow trout. But I think tenkara fishing is uh, Japanese style kebari fishing down in Keiru mountain stream to catch uh, trouts, Iwana, Yamame, or maybe rainbow trout. Yeah, say Iwana and Yamame, basically. And uh, maybe we can do it in a lake, but basically in a mountain stream, I think. That is my, I think, uh, my thought about Kelly fishing. There we go. Um, Kate, you've given us a cracking interview at the, the side of the stream, just after some amazing food, um, yeah. which is very, yeah. very welcome, given the <laughs> the hiking and the fishing. And yeah. uh, We actually yeah. caught a lot of fish that day. Yeah, it was, it, was very a, cool. it was a good place and beautifully wanted as well. The thing is, after we stopped uh, rolling the cameras for that interview, uh, we just sort of said, oh, you know, is there anything else we should maybe be talking about? And uh, Katie just kind of cracked off into another brilliant interview um, that's actually give more detail, if that's possible, than, than the previous one that we've just shown you. Yeah, I mean, what, what people have just seen is the uh, sort of, I, I don't want to say standard, but it's fairly similar format. We try and get the same answers We, we cover everyone. this game, we try and ask people to talk within the same ballpark yeah, of, yeah. of what it means to them. Yeah, so, that, so But obviously their answers are very yeah, different, the, but it is... The, the whole idea form. was to draw every different Tenkara angler's sort of experiences into one, so we know... Everyone mm. talks about their flies. Everyone talks about the kind of fish they like. Yeah, to yeah, yeah. all of that. But something that's not really, you know, it's not really every ten carat angler that does it. Mm. Um, Genryu fishing is really a kind of crossover between fishing and, and mountaineering and, and, and shower climbing, isn't it? A hundred percent. And I think the people that get into it, it is almost like a kind of a. It takes over that the sort of the actual yeah. act of um, going into Genryu areas. The fact you've got to be a pretty useful rock climber, um, you know, the sort of reverse canyoneering yeah. approach to using the river as the, as the easiest path, you know, where there's no paths because the, the forest is so dense or the rocks are so steep, the easiest route's often straight up mm. the river. So that's a, a huge part of it. Um, and it seems to actually be as engaging, if not more uh, engaging than, than just the fishing itself. Yeah. Um, and I think Cage's interview reflects that, and he goes, you know, quite deep into what it means to him, and then some of the more technical aspects. I've had a, well. had a brilliant idea. Why don't we um, round this show up for now, and in you know the next few days, I'll edit that together, and we'll put uh, it's, Cage's it's Genry definitely worth his own episode. Yeah. So I think if we get that as the next thing that we can put out there, yeah. that would be yeah. a great thing to share um, with you so, guys. Yeah, hopefully we'll update you on the state of our big project and bring you 
a Genryu interview from Keiichi, mm. uh, let's say within the next week to a week. Yeah, no I'll, pressure. I'll, I'll put the pressure <laughs> we can on. do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's uh, let's give it a go. So, uh, as as usual, thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks to everyone who's a Patreon uh, supporter. You mm. guys are truly fantastic. And thanks to everyone who signed up to our free email tutorial list. If you hear that and you think, what's this free email tutorial list? Check out for some links. Um, <laughs> what are we up to now? About a year's worth of free online 388 tutorials? days worth. You don't get, you don't get yeah. a lesson every day. Yeah. Sometimes it's one a week, sometimes it's a couple of weeks. Yeah. But there are automated lessons that will last you. Once you yeah. From day zero when you sign up through to day 388, there's yeah. stuff to get you going that's completely free. Yeah. In it, you'll get some offers for things that are related. Um, you get money off offers for some of our products and that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, that's how the whole thing I would works. say it's about as far from spam as you can get. Most people that uh, you know want to give us testimonials will say, the, these emails have changed my fishing life. Yeah. And if you don't like the lessons, they're free, so yeah. you, don't have to, you don't have to get a free from. You just unsubscribe and they stop yeah. arriving. So. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Yeah, anyway, that'll be online. Thanks to everyone again. Until next time, which should be fairly soon, mm. um, we'll see you again on 10 Carat in Focus. Take care. Get out and fish. <laughs>